All right. Um, so you sent over this research paper on native sparse attention. Yeah. And uh, it seems like kind of a big jump forward mm -hmm. in how LLMs could handle information. Right. Especially when we're talking about like these huge amounts of data. Yeah, it really tackles a big problem with LLMs right now, which yeah. is dealing with these massive sequences of information. Yeah, exactly. Without, you know, needing Google's worth of computing power. Yeah. So this paper is all about this new approach mm -hmm. called NSA. Right. Which aims to make LLMs more uh, efficient. That's right. But without sacrificing performance. Yeah. And to really understand NSA, yeah. we need to kind of back up and think about Christ. traditional attention mechanisms, right? Yeah. So attention mechanisms, they're there to help LLMs uh -huh. focus on the parts of a text that are actually relevant. Right. But as that text gets longer and longer, yeah. that gets computationally expensive really fast. Yeah. Oh, I see. So it's like um, if you're trying to find a needle in a haystack. Yeah. But the haystack just keeps getting bigger. Exactly. The paper actually points out okay. that existing sparse attention methods, mm -hmm. they they try to address this oh, yeah? by being really selective mm. about which parts of the input to actually focus on. Okay. But they haven't quite figured out yeah. how to do that without sacrificing either efficiency mm -hmm. or the accuracy of the model. So that's where NSA comes in. Right. To like kind of get both. Yeah. It aims for both. Okay. Better efficiency and better performance. Okay. It does this by introducing this uh, hierarchical token modeling system. Okay. So instead of just looking at individual words or tokens, okay. it processes information in a much more organized way. Okay. Like imagine... Um, having a multi-level filing system, right? Mm -hmm. Where the LLM can quickly pinpoint the most relevant information okay. without having to read through everything. So it's kind of like instead of, you know, reading every single word, right. it's like grouping words yeah. and concepts together to get a faster understanding. Exactly. And the researchers actually break this down into three main components. Wow. Um, compression, selection, and sliding window. Okay, so let's break that down a little bit. Yeah. Compression sounds pretty straightforward. Right, it's like yeah. summarizing the key points of a chapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how does this uh, right. how does the selection process work? So think about how you would skim a research paper. Okay. You'd probably look at the headings first. Yeah. And then maybe dive into the paragraphs yeah. that seem relevant to your research. Okay. So NSA kind of does the same thing. Okay. It uses this compressed information mm. to figure out which blocks of tokens are the most important, yeah. and then it focuses on those. Oh, interesting. So it's not even looking at just individual words anymore. Right. It's looking at these chunks of text. Right. What about this sliding window part? Okay. Does that mean that you can only process, like, small chunks at a time? Not exactly. Think of the sliding window um, mm -hmm. as like a short term memory mechanism. Okay. So it allows NSA to keep track of the immediate context okay. surrounding the blocks that it selected. Like yeah. think about how your brain yeah. remembers the surrounding sentences. Yeah, yeah. Even when you're focusing on a particular paragraph. Exactly. Yeah. So this helps NSA understand the flow of information. Uh -huh and capture those more nuanced relationships mm -hmm. between different parts of the text. So it's like a mental sticky note that says, yeah. hey, remember this, it might be important later. Exactly, yeah. And that ability to maintain context yeah. is really crucial mm. for accurate interpretation and problem solving. Okay, so NSA sounds super sophisticated, right? Mm -hmm. mm. But does it actually work in practice? Yeah. Like, did they actually put this to the test? They did. But and that's what's so exciting about this research. Yeah. They tested it on several benchmark tasks okay. that LLMs are typically evaluated on. Okay. So things like long context question answering, mm. code understanding, yeah. and even complex mathematical reasoning. Wait, they had it like tackling math problems? Yeah. How did it do with that? The results were pretty impressive. Okay. Um, not only did it perform well, but mm. in a lot of cases, yeah. it actually matched or even surpassed the performance yeah. of existing methods wow. while being way more efficient. That's huge, right? Yeah. So did they like uh, look into why it was performing so well? Yeah, they actually did. They like analyze what was happening. They visualized the attention patterns. Okay. And what they found was that NSA was actually learning right. to focus on the right information. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like, um, like watching the LLM develop its own intuition, right, for what was important 
to solve the problem. That's fascinating. Yeah. Um, so, okay, I'm curious about one thing, though. Yeah. We've been talking about, you know, how it processes information. Mm -hmm. But what about the training aspect? Right. Like, did they actually train mm -hmm. the LLM using NSA? That's a great question. Yeah. And, um, you know, a, a lot of existing sparse attention methods, yeah. they really focus on inference, okay. which is how the LLM processes information right. after it's already been trained. Okay, so it's like they're good at applying knowledge, right. but not necessarily like learning new things efficiently. Exactly. Okay. But what's interesting about NSA mm -hmm. is that it was designed with training in mind okay. from the get-go. Oh, so they like baked it in. Yeah, they baked it right into the learning process. And the results show that it doesn't just work. Yep. It actually makes training more efficient too. So it's like a win-win. Yeah, exactly. Right, like faster processing and faster learning. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what does this mean for the future of LLMs? Right. Like what kind of doors does this open? Well, if NSA really lives up to its potential, yeah. we could be on the verge of seeing LLMs mm. that can handle much more complex tasks okay. involving like huge amounts of data, right. all while becoming faster and more accessible. Can you give me some examples? Yeah, sure. Like what could we actually see? Imagine LLMs that can like summarize entire books okay. or generate code for massive software projects okay. or like analyze complex scientific data right. a fraction of the time that it would take humans. That's remarkable. Yeah. But I mean, are there any potential downsides right. or challenges that we need to be thinking about? Sure. Like with, with any new technology, yeah. th there are always unknowns, right? Right, right. And um, one thing that this paper made me think about was, you know, if NSA is so good yeah. at focusing on relevant information, mm. could this also be used to address some of the problems that we currently see with LLMs? Like, uh, you're talking about biases. Yeah, things like biases yeah. or inaccuracies in their output. Right, right, right. Because sometimes yeah. they just state things with so much confidence right. and they're just wrong. Exactly. Yeah. So could NSA actually help with that? So the question is, could NSA's ability mm -hmm. to prioritize accurate information yeah. make them less prone to these kinds of errors? Right. And, you know, further research is needed okay. to explore that possibility. That would be huge, right? <laughs> yeah, it would be a game changer. Yeah, I mean, it would increase our trust in them. Exactly. Yeah, for those really important tasks. Mm -hmm. Did they say anything about, like... Yeah, they actually emphasized the need yeah. to explore how robust NSA is yeah. across different types of tasks and different data sets. Okay. And they also suggested looking into hmm. how NSA could be combined with other techniques oh, yeah. to make LLMs even more efficient and accurate. So there's still a lot to explore. Absolutely. This is really just the beginning. It is. It's yeah. um it's a really significant step forward mm -hmm. that opens up all sorts of new possibilities cool. for research and development. It is exciting to think about what could come next. Yeah. Um you know, you mentioned earlier that LLMs could play a role in tackling like, some of the world's biggest problems. Right. What did you mean by that? Well, you know, the potential for LLMs to have an impact yeah. in fields like medicine, climate science, yes. economics, it's huge. Yeah. But we have to remember that LLMs are tools. Mm -hmm. And like any tool, yeah. they can be used for good or bad. So it's not just about, like, building bigger and faster ones. Uh -huh. It's about making sure that they're used ethically. Exactly. Yeah. That conversation has to happen yeah. alongside all the technological advancements. Well said. Yeah. I think we've covered a lot of ground today. Yeah, we have. This feels like just the tip of the iceberg. It does. And hopefully um, yeah. our listeners now have a better sense yeah. of not just how NSA works, mm -hmm. but why it's such a big deal. It definitely sparked a lot of thoughts for me. Good. Um, I'm particularly intrigued by yeah. what you said earlier about uh, mm -hmm. LLMs becoming more aware right. of their own limitations. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting area to explore. Yeah. Like if we can train them to be so efficient, mm. could we also train them to recognize yeah. when they don't have enough information right. to give a reliable answer? So basically to know what they don't know. Right. Yeah. That would be revolutionary. Like, imagine an LLM that, instead of confidently stating something that's wrong, could say, I'm not sure about that. I need more information. 
Yeah. Or even, you know, suggest where to find that missing piece of information. Yeah, that would be incredibly valuable. Right. It would really shift LLMs from being like powerful tools yeah. to becoming like true collaborators. Yeah, it's like uh, it kind of ties back into what we were talking about yeah. with responsible AI development, right? right? If we can teach them to be more self-aware, mm -hmm. maybe we can also teach them to be more cautious yeah. and reduce those harmful biases that we see. So it's not just making them smarter. Yeah. It's like aiming for wisdom. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Yeah. I think that's... Uh, that's the real challenge and the most exciting frontier yeah. in LLM research right now. Well, this paper's given us a lot to think about. It has. It feels like we've only just like scratched the surface yeah. of what NSA could really achieve. Yeah, it definitely has. And, um, you know, yeah. I'd encourage our listeners to yeah. check out the full research paper yeah, okay. if they really want to dive into yeah. all the technical details. We'll be sure to include links to that and other resources right. in the show notes. Yes, definitely. And as always. Yeah. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Absolutely. You know, join the conversation. Yeah. Share your insights. Let's um Yeah. Let's keep exploring this world of AI together. Until next time, keep learning. Yes. Keep questioning. Keep diving deep. And keep diving deep.